Hello and welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here bringing you another entry for the episode Recap and Thoughts category. This video will be dedicated to the A segment of episode 62 of Codename Kids Next Door, Operation Clown. We begin this segment at Gulliger Elementary School, where we see number two is presenting a report on King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. We also see that number two is making knight-related jokes, puns, uh, wordplay, and what have you while he's presenting his report, much to the, the dismay of the rest of the class. Mrs. Thompson tries to politely uh, tell number two to let another student have their turn, and she's also pleading to Egbert to quickly come up and present his report so that number two will sit down. But number two doesn't miss a chance to make some egg-related jokes, puns, wordplay, and what have you before he uh, goes back to his desk. Number five hits number two with her hat when number two sits back down at his desk for having to listen to all those jokes. And number two takes issue with number five calling his jokes lame. He pulls out a copy of the school's newspaper and uh, he points out an article that has glowing praise for the jokes. Number five points out that number two is quoting himself, but he doesn't really pay that any mind. Eventually, the bell for lunch time rings, so the students are leaving the class to naturally head to the cafeteria, and we see that one of the students in the class is a boy who's dressed like a clown. He also has clown accessories and clown makeup on, and this boy does not have a cheerful expression on his face. Uh, out in the hallway, uh, number two can't resist making another joke before number five walks ahead of number two to get to the cafeteria. After number five leaves, uh, the boy dressed like a clown that we saw not too long ago uh, gets number two's attention and he wants to talk to number two. Uh, the clown wastes no time in telling number two that he wants number two to stop all the funny business. Uh, he wants number two to stop telling jokes, puns, wordplay, and what have you. Um, the clown says that Gulliger Elementary School is the Clownarelli family's turf, and, uh, and he also reveals his name is Tony. So Tony Clownarelli tells number two that if number two doesn't stop with the funny business, there will be consequences to pay. Shortly after Tony leaves, however, number two does not heed Tony's warning, and uh, he proceeds to make another joke. Tony quickly uh, returns and comments how he just told number two to quit with the funny business. So some other clowns appear, and they begin to throw uh, rhubarb pies at uh, number two. And number two comments about how he hates rhubarb pies, and uh, he claims that he won't tell another joke again. Having said that, though, we quickly see a montage uh, throughout the course of lunch period, which shows number two still doesn't heed Tony's warnings, and he continues to uh, uh, tell jokes, and he's continuously hit with rhubarb pies in retaliation. Over the course of the montage, number two becomes more and more nervous to tell jokes. And eventually, number two does make it to the cafeteria, and uh, number five questions what took number two so long because lunchtime is almost over, and she also questions why number two is covered in rhubarb pies because she knows he hates rhubarb pies. Number two simply comments along the lines about how uh, uh, some clowns gave him uh, an offer that he couldn't refuse, or he says something along those lines anyway. And then number five notices a fly in her soup. And uh, number five, or yes, number five notices a fly in her soup, and number two is excited to tell a joke relating to flies and soups. But he notices at a nearby uh, table, um, yes, at a nearby table, uh, the clowns, uh, yes, the clown enforcers uh, are sitting at a nearby table. And Tony is just shaking his head uh, to say, essentially, don't do it. And number two um, does eventually 
yes, number two doesn't go through with telling the fly joke. And um, number five comments that they should head out to the playground now. So number five goes ahead of number two to get to the playground, and number two starts to cry to himself about uh, the punchline he wanted to say with regards to the fly in the soup joke. So number two joins number five out on the playground, and um, yes, we see that, um, uh, yes, uh, out on the playground, number five is telling number two to relay a message to number one about how um, she's not going to Yes, number five won't be able to join in on an upcoming mission because she's going to spend some time with her dad tonight. And then number five notices a chicken that's trying to cross the road. And number five uh, questions why a chicken is trying to cross the road. Number two gets excited to tell one of the oldest uh, jokes in the book, um, but he's also nervous because of the clown enforcer's uh, earlier actions. Eventually, number five leaves and decides they probably will never find out why the chicken tried to cross the road. Number two, yes, after number five leaves, number two can no longer resist and he uh, tells a punchline for the uh, chicken joke. The clown enforcers notice this and they arrive in what else but a clown car and they grab number two, they throw him in the clown car and they drive off somewhere. We also hear number two insisting that they have to let him have the chicken joke he's been waiting for so long uh, for the perfect setup for that particular joke is what he's essentially saying while he's being uh, taken away. Eventually, uh, it becomes nighttime and the clown car arrives uh, outside of a circus tent and uh, the clown enforcers uh, bring number two inside of um, I guess you could call it an office wagon. That's the best way I can think to describe it. And inside of this office wagon, the clown enforcers um, present number two before the clown father, whose voice is meant to be a reference to Marlon Brandau. Or yes, he has a Marlon Brandau impression for a voice. Um, apparently, the clown enforcers have told the clown father about number two before. And um, Tony tells the clown father about how Number two recently told the chicken joke, and the clown father is not thrilled to hear this. Number two questions uh, wha uh, what these clowns are all about, or he says uh, what type of clowns are they, essentially, is what he inquires. And um, the clown father proceeds to uh, bring up uh, an event from the past. Um, yes, the clown father used to be uh, part of a duo act with another clown, whose clown name is Chunko, and um, the clown father and Chunko uh, were performing at a birthday party um, during this uh, time that the clown father is talking about. And Chunko was setting up a joke for um, the clown father to deliver the uh, punchline, but the clown father admits that he forgot about, or he forgot the punchline, and the kids at the birthday party were not happy about this. They started to throw things at Chunko and the clown father, and uh, the clown father even notes that they started to throw progressively heavier items. I think a piano was thrown at one point during the flashback. Uh, the clown father explains that he uh, lost consciousness uh, uh, during this event, and after he regained consciousness, um, um, everyone was gone, including Chunko, and the clown father still questions where Chunko is to this day. So the clown father um, decides, or yes, the clown father said that incident led to him declaring that no one would tell any jokes unless he said so. Number two points out that the clown father isn't letting anyone tell jokes, and the clown father says that's precisely the point. Uh, uh, he's preventing others from telling jokes so that no one will be hurt the way Chunko and him were hurt. And then he instructs the clown enforcers to bring number two to the lions. But number two manages to escape when he uh, sets up a knock-knock joke. But when the clown father inquires who's there, um, number two says, not him, uh, number two. And then number two runs off. The clown enforcers actually found the joke to be funny. But the clown father uh, instructs them to uh, chase after number two. So inside the circus tent, we see that number five and Dr. Lincoln, her dad, are uh, spectators for this particular circus performance. And then Dr. Lincoln notes how um, the clowns are entering uh, 
the uh, main the main arena of the circus tent. And number five notices number two being chased by the um, uh, the clown enforcers. Number five uh, politely requests if her dad can go get some more popcorn. And when Dr. Lincoln goes off to get some more popcorn, number five activates her uh, jetpack backpack to uh, fly fly to the uh, main arena of the circus tent and uh, help number two out. So number two and number five are able to uh, fight off against the clown enforcers. They are able to uh, uh, try to escape from the clown enforcers and fight them off. But eventually they become cornered when the clown father appears with a clown themed weapon and the clown enforcers are, uh, are uh, blocking their, the other way. Uh, but before the clown father can do anything else, uh, Dr. Lincoln ends up walking through the main, uh, the main area or the main arena of the circus tent, still going to go get some more popcorn. And he recognizes the clown father. He calls him uh, Bunko, um, and, or Bonko, yes. Uh, and Bonko uh, recognizes Dr. Lincoln to be Chunko. And uh, yes, uh, Bonko inquires uh, Chunk. Chunko, Dr. Lincoln, uh, where he's been all this time. Dr. Lincoln admits he's been meaning to uh, reach out to Bonko after that incident, but he does admit that after the incident, he decided that being a clown was kind of stupid. The clown enforcers agree with Dr. Lincoln, but Bonko um, is offended to hear this. He points out that Chunko loved being a clown. And Dr. Lincoln admits that, yeah, he still does think that being a clown was fun, but he does prefer his current profession as a doctor. And Dr. Lincoln actually offers to, um, offers to uh, uh, arrange for the clown enforcers or the Clownarelli family, uh, Bonko and the clown enforcers, to uh, have jobs at the hospital. And the, the Clownarelli family are, um, are, are excited about this, pros about this prospect. And um, yes, uh, Bonko takes off his uh, rubber nose and he gives it to number two. He tells number two that number two can be in charge of the funny business uh, on this turf now um, because he's going to join the hospital staff now. And um, number two makes a joke about not knowing that uh, number five's dad was a clown before. He says he didn't knows rather than didn't know. And number five groans at the joke, uh, but Dr. Lincoln and Bonko decide that um, they should uh, demonstrate a joke for number two. So um, Dr. Lincoln sets up the why did the chicken cross the road joke, but Bonko uh, forgot the punchline. And so the segment ends with uh, several of the spectators uh, uh, being angered by this and throwing stuff at Bonko, while number two comments about how the chicken joke is a classic. Uh, yes, that's how we end this segment. So there you go, this segment was a number two spotlight appearance. And amusingly enough, um, the sibling segment, yes, this segment's sibling segment is also a number two spotlight appearance. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we eventually get to it. Let's focus on this segment. And uh, yes, this segment in particular uh, put, uh, put some focus on number two's uh, brand of humor or his type of humor. Yes, number two fashions himself to be Sector V's comedian. Uh, we've seen that um, pretty early on in the series, although it did become more prevalent uh, later on. Like, yes, yeah, season one did show number one, or no, uh, number two, pardon me. Yes, uh, season one showed number two uh, making jokes early on in season one. Yes, early on in season one, we saw number two making jokes, but it wasn't until later on in the series where... Um, where uh, number two's brand of comedy became uh, more prevalent. And yes, this segment, like I said, highlights uh, number two's uh, brand of comedy. And we actually get antagonists that would fit with um, the, the topic of humor. Uh, we get clown antagonists, although um, these particular clowns are also a reference to the mafia. Yes, they're a family-friendly uh, equivalent to the mafia. Uh, the Clown Mafia, or the Clownarelli family, that's what they're called uh, during the segment. Um, yes, they prove to be the antagonists of this, um, of this segment. And at first, uh, they claim that it's just because they don't want others to tell jokes on uh, their turf. But we soon find out that the Clown Father actually had a rather sympathetic reason for why he didn't want others to tell jokes. 
Yes, we found out that Bonko the Clown Father actually uh, didn't want others to tell jokes because he was trying to prevent others from being hurt the way Chunko and him were hurt during that birthday party incident. So the Clownarelli family, uh, yes, you could say the Clownarelli family were actually type 3 anti-villains, well-intentioned extremists. They actually had a benevolent or sympathetic goal in mind, but their methods of going about it were very problematic and extreme. And um, yes, some would also note that the Clown Father's uh, orders to send number two to the lions uh, seems counterproductive to the intention of not letting others be hurt. Although, at the same time, others have also made a valid point that, um, that it's not unheard of in real life for people for some people to um, uh, lose sense of reason and common sense and end up doing something that's counterproductive to their goals. Um, yes, in real life, uh, when some people let uncontrolled emotions or feelings get the better of them, uh, it can lead to them uh, making choices or performing actions that are counterproductive to their original goals. So yes, essentially, it's not unheard of for people in real life uh, to sometimes act irrational or to... Uh, uh, lose sight of common sense and I think that was the case here for the clown father yes the clown father uh, became irrational because his emotions were uncontrolled uh, but we did see that but yes um, so that is an important lesson too like uh, not everyone in real life will always listen to reason or sometimes it's easier to point out irrational behavior when you're an outsider looking in rather than being someone who's in the heat of the moment but yes, uh, the Clown Father and his Clown Enforcers did eventually uh, redeem themselves by the end um, when they reunited, or when Bonko reunited with Chunko, who is revealed to be Dr. Lincoln. Yes, I did mention in a previous Recap and Thoughts video that we did eventually get to learn what Dr. Lincoln did before he became a doctor, and this is the segment. So Dr. Lincoln used to be a professional clown. And... Yes, while I'm thinking about it, I actually do know some friends of mine in real life who are professional clowns, and I get the feeling that they probably wouldn't like uh, Dr. Lincoln's comments about how being a clown was stupid, or um, or how some of the um, clown enforcers might have seemed a bit dismissive over the idea of being clowns, But um, and I can sympathize with that. I know it can be very frustrating dealing with someone who might act dismissive towards a profession or a job that isn't considered the norm or a traditional job. Um, but at the end, Dr. Lincoln still did seem to admit that he did enjoy being a clown. I guess you could just say Dr. Lincoln liked uh, being a doctor more than he liked being a clown, because at the end of the segment, he still did show an affinity for clowning, and uh, he, he was willing to set up a joke with Bonko, so... Yeah, I think maybe uh, Dr. Lincoln just might have used a poor choice of words on his part. Um, and that can happen. I mean, sometimes we do make those uh, verbal faux pas. They do happen in real life uh, to, um, to most, if not everyone. But otherwise, um, uh, otherwise, yes, I would say that I did enjoy this segment. Uh, I did like how we got to focus on number two's brand of humor, uh, his uh, status being Sector V's comedian or self-appointed comedian. Uh, number five also got a, a good amount of attention. Yes, number five was the only other Sector V operative besides number two to appear. So it was cool to see number two and number five um, um, interacting with each other again. Um, yes, some fans notice hints of the number two and number five pairing in this segment. And um, yeah, it was cool to learn about Dr. Lincoln's uh, background before he became a doctor. And it was nice of Dr. Lincoln to offer his, um, his uh, friend Bonko and uh, the rest of the clowns uh, some jobs at the hospital. That was pretty heartwarming. It shows how he does consider Bonko to be his friend. And like I said, I thought it was pretty cool how the clown mafia, uh, or it was interesting how the clown mafia actually had a, a rather sympathetic uh, goal even if their methods were rather extreme. But otherwise, yes, I would say that's about it. So as of this video, we've now discussed the A segment of episode 62 of Codename Kids Next Door on this channel. Take care and until next time.